If you recall, one of the guidelines was to try and show comparisons in our charts. Okay, so it's useful to see the distribution of a single variable, but it's even more useful to see that distribution itself compared among multiple variables. So let's see what I mean here. What I'm trying to do here is to say, show me a box plot of miles per gallon by cylinders, right? Remember in our automobile data set, you've got one column which is number of cylinders and this had values like three, four, five, six, eight. So I want to see a separate box plot of cars with three cylinders, separate box plot of cars with four cylinders, etc. And the, the, so I use this command box plot mpg tilde cylinders. Now this tilde is something that you will encounter quite a bit in R. It's part of what is called a formula expression. That is whenever you're trying to tell R a formula, then tilde often comes into play. So what we are saying is show me mpg as a function of cylinders. So think of it like y tilde, y is function of x. Okay, so show me how mpg varies by cylinder. Okay, so that's the whole idea. So whenever you see the tilde, most of the time on the left hand side will be your dependent variable, right hand side will be your independent variables. Okay, so when you do this, what you're telling the system literally is take the data, divide the data by number of cylinders. In other words, create a subset of the data for three cylinders, another subset for four cylinders, another subset for five cylinders, and so on. And for each of these subsets, plot a separate box plot. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. And notice also that I used a slightly different syntax for box plot. Rather than saying auto dollar MPG, auto dollar cylinders, I just said MPG cylinders, and here I said data equals auto. Okay, so this is sort of like saying attach auto and then doing this, except that this attach is happening only for this command. Otherwise, the attach will remain attached till you actually detach it. In this case, we are saying for the purpose of this command, look for everything that I am talking about in this data frame called auto. So if you do that, you get a chart which looks like this. And of course, as expected, we've got separate box plots for each of the cylinders, right? So this is a box plot of only the three cylinder cars. And this is a box plot of only the four cylinder cars. Okay, so that's what's going on here that uh, we've divided the data into subsets by cylinders and plotted a separate box plot for each cylinder. Now the beauty of this is that this allows us to compare the performance of the fuel efficiency by cylinder. And of course we are seeing that, you know, although there is some variability for every cylinder, if you look at just the medians, okay, you're able to see that four cylinder cars seem to have the highest uh, miles per gallon performance, followed somewhat closely by five cylinder cars, which is slightly lower, okay. Now, of course, you can't say that uh, every four-cylinder car has better performance than five-cylinder car. That's not true because if you look at the box, you'll see that there are five-cylinder cars which outperform four-cylinder cars. But when it comes to uh, three cylinders and four cylinders, even there, if you look at the box alone, the boxes do not overlap. But if you look at the complete chart, there are three-cylinder cars because remember that it's going all the way up to the top whisker which is higher than the bottom whisker of this, okay? Which means there are four cylinder cars which have better performance than some, uh, there are three cylinder cars which have better performance than some four cylinder cars, but by and large, four cylinder cars have a better performance, okay? So clearly you can, you're able to see a trend here that the performance improves up to four cylinders when you go to three to four, and when you start going above four, you're starting to see a dip in performance, okay? Another thing that you're also able to see is that for eight cylinder cars, there are many outliers. Okay, for four cylinder cars, there was only one outlier and no outliers for three and five cylinder cars. But for six and eight cylinder cars, you're able to see that there are several outliers. Okay, so this is where the benefit of comparisons 
comes into play right so here rather than just describing data we are actually telling a story right we are implying showing possible causality possible causality that four cylinder cars actually have better fuel performance than other cars okay and that four and five were pretty close right so now we are starting to see more than just describing the data that's happening because we are now showing comparisons we are bringing more variables into play and thereby allowing people to see the data better now one important point to note is that although we have these separate box plots we have to be very clear that each of these box plots was based on different numbers of data points right we already know that our data set of 300 and for almost 400 rows 25% of them were four cylinder cars right so this box plot was made with far more data than say this box plot there are very few three cylinder cars okay so we have to be careful about that right because when your data is based on a very small set of uh, you know source data when your plot is based on a very small set of data then the reliability of the plot comes into question okay so why don't we try and also see how, how many elements were used in each of the plots so for that there is a variable here called var width is true and this makes the box width proportional to the square root of the sample size okay so notice what happened here that this box is quite wide and it tells us that this box plot was made with far more data than was this box plot because this plot box is very narrow okay so the number of four cylinder and six cylinder and eight cylinder cars was actually pretty high three and five cylinders were actually very low because you're seeing that from the width okay so once again we are bringing more dimensions into play okay so for example you may say well the the fuel efficiency difference between four cylinder six cylinder eight cylinder cars the the box plots were based on significant numbers of data items right so this difference actually makes some sense right we can be quite sure of this difference whereas these two things were based on very small number of data so we really don't know uh, you know how reliable those two plots are so let's take another example so here we are plotting the miles per gallon by the model year right in other words we want to probably get an idea of how the car's uh, fuel efficiency has been changing over the years so model year is one of the columns we are saying data is auto so are there more uh, so the plot comes out like this okay and of course as we expect we can see that there is a general trend of fuel efficiency increasing over time okay and then we can explore why is it there was this such such a big jump in 74 we can you know this gives us some fodder to go and think about and explore the data a little more and there's also been a big jump suddenly from 79 to 80 so we can again look at that uh, so that's what we are seeing here and again we may have a question are there more cars from some years we know from the previous slide that we can use var width to find that out okay so one way to look at uh, we we have looked at two different ways of visualizing a single numeric variable right so we can do a histogram of the variable we can do box plot of the variable and then we can also get a little more sophisticated with the box plots when we uh, condition the box plot on some other variable like we did with cylinders and year just now okay when we are looking at uh, two columns okay so then uh, scatter plots become very useful so for example i've got a column called mpg another column called horsepower and i want to see how the two are related we can use the plot function from r to do that okay so plot mpg tilde horsepower in other words put mpg on the y axis horsepower on the x axis and use the data frame auto to resolve any names that are being used right alternately i could have said plot 
auto dollar mpg till day auto dollar horsepower in that case i would not have needed to say data equals but the, when i say data equals something then the names here would be resolved in the context of whatever i have said here so this is the plot you get of course as we expected mpg is on the y axis horsepower is on the x axis and we can expect to see this trend right that the as the horsepower increases fuel efficiency is going to decrease this is expected again you're seeing a somewhat curvilinear relationship okay clearly you can see there's a kind of a curve that's going on here now often times we would like to add the regression line to a scatter plot so first we do the scatter plot just like before and then we want to add the regression line and uh, first of all we build the linear regression model for that mod is lm mpg tilde horsepower that's the linear regression model simple linear regression to find a linear function that explains mpg in terms of horsepower and then we can use the function ab line to plot a line that is to overlay the line on top of the scatter plot that we already have so ab line mod right mod is the model with the linear regression and mod has the coefficients of the line of the linear regression line so if you just do ab line mod it will plot the line so the result is going to be the scatter plot along with the linear regression line as well okay another very useful plot is what is called as a scatter plot matrix so here i am using the pairs function to generate a scatter plot matrix so i'm saying pairs that is i want to build the scatter plot of all pairs of a certain set of variables right so here i'm saying use the columns mpg displacement horsepower weight for these four columns plot the scatter plot for every combination of these variables taken two at a time okay the net result is a scatter plot matrix and it looks like this okay so notice that you've got the variable names on the diagonal and you've got the various plots okay so how do you interpret the scatter plot matrix so let's take this particular plot okay what is this a plot of of course it's a scatter plot so it's a plot of one variable against another okay now the fact that horsepower is on the x axis displacement is parallel to the y axis tells us that this is a plot of horsepower on the x axis displacement on the y axis okay that's how you interpret it let's take one more example so this time we take this particular plot for this plot what is on the x axis x axis is this and along the x axis you see weight y axis is this along the y axis you see mpg so this is a plot of weight on the x axis mpg on the y axis okay now incidentally before i jump off ahead let's understand what is the meaning of a scatter plot okay so scatter plot is basically showing you every point represents a value of the horsepower and its corresponding mpg okay so for example on a particular row of the data frame you have one car with a certain horsepower certain mpg okay so this point here represents the horsepower mpg combination for one car and of course together all of the points represent the horsepower mpg combination for the entire data set okay so obviously there will be as many points here as there are number of rows in the data set okay and that is what helps us to explore the relationship between horsepower and mpg okay so that really completes our discussion of base graphics henceforth we will actually be using ggplot to plot most of our graphics you will see that ggplot is extremely powerful and it's got a very systematic syntax for us to generate all kinds of 
very revealing graphs.